during your undergrad, you actively took up courses in maths because you wanted to avoid spending time in a physics lab. You felt that <laughs> spending six months of your time tuning up a cloud chamber is probably not the most exciting use of your time. And, and you found theoretical physics to be more exciting at that point. I want to get your thoughts on the current state of physics. If you had to create like a state of union for physics at the moment, for someone who's just coming in, how do you view, I guess, both experimental physics and theoretical physics? There are some people who would say that theoretical physics, at least a certain subsection of it, is now stagnated or at a standstill because of string theory. So how would you create this pulse or this sentiment around Ex theoretical physics and experimental physics. Well, first of all, the older I got and, and the more knowledge I got as a physicist, the more I appreciated experiments. <laughs> when I was younger, I, I didn't. Oh, I spent time in a lab, working in a lab as an undergraduate, and I found it very frustrating. But, you know, it was also seemed so much more sexy to, you know, the mathematics and developing new ideas and following the footsteps of Einstein and Feynman. And, but, but, but physics is an experimental science. And and I'm often envious of my experimental colleagues because once they've done an experiment, they have something tangible. If you're a theorist, it's very hard. You don't have very many tangible things. It's sometimes even hard to call an idea your own because often many people have similar ideas. And so it's, it's, um, it, it's not as satisfying, I think, as having done an experiment. It's like building anything, right? I mean, you build something and you can see it. Well, you build an idea and it's maybe attractive inside, but there's not an objective evidence that it's there or that it's yours let's say i think you know people hype things too much string theory was hyped too much but the doldrums are probably hyped too much physics look if there was a new wonderful result every year it wouldn't even be exciting in some sense you know so yeah there's a lot of puzzles we are at a point where there are some major fundamental puzzles in theoretical physics and it may take 100 years to solve some of them I had hoped that experiments would, would, would maybe discover supersymmetry, evidence for dark matter, some kind of evidence for, for that would give us a, something to go on beyond the standard model, why the Higgs is where it is. So there are a lot of mysteries, and some of them may be pretty hard to solve. I think there are many, but you know that's just one area of physics. There's a lot of areas of physics where there's incredible excitement Generally, whenever we open a new window on the universe, a new experimental window on the universe, physics gets exciting. And so, in fact, what you saw when, when the Large Hadron Collider developed, you saw a lot of string theorists jump ship like rats. Because, <laughs> um, hey, suddenly there was going to be experimental data and maybe it might reveal something new. And so I think, uh, you, you know, we look, we're, we're building new telescopes and they're going to reveal new things. We have new technologies for making for handling quantum phenomena, maybe at a macroscopic scale, and, and being able to manipulate materials in new ways. So there's lots of exciting new areas of experimental study, and, and even biology, experimental physics as applied to biology. So I think that, that um, rumors of the demise of physics are, 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 over, are, are incorrect, but absolutely. And I think, and I think theory is, is fascinating because... There's two ways of doing theory, and I've done both in my life. Mm -hmm. You can come up with theories that experimentalists try and prove more. Actually, experimentalists try and disprove them. Let me make that quite clear. <laughs> and they love disproving theories. I've, I've had many theories when experimentalists say, oh, we disproved it. They're so excited. But, um, but so you can, you can, that's one kind of theor theoretical physics. But the other is to explain experimental results that are perplexing. And that, that's what led us to the, the idea of dark energy initially. Is all, there were many experimental results that were perplexing and realized it could all fit together in this one picture. And so even, even, if, um, even if coming up with fundamental theories may seem daunting or may be, uh, have been difficult because of a lack of, uh, of maybe data for a long time, once new things turn on, it's exciting for both theorists and experimentalists. So... Um, uh, would I would I become an experimentalist now? Well, I would maybe, except I'd have to have a whole, whole different skill set than I have. It's a little late now, but um, I certainly appreciate it. And one of the things that I'll get, I'm giving you a long answer, but it, but it's it is my answer. I I I originally, as you kind of pointed out, I originally did mathematics and physics. And then when I entered graduate school, I did mathematical physics. I did what you might call mathematical physics, mm -hmm. 
It was very, very formal. And it was a, a now friend of mine, then a, I guess, a mentor, and a guy named Sheldon Glashow, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics, who, who when, when I, um, who became a very good friend, um, when I was a graduate student, at one point, he said to me, there's physics and there's formalism, and you have to know the difference. And it was and it was in the process of that that I realized that I never really wanted to do things that were not in touch with experiment in one way or another. And that was a significant decision for me. And that meant I had to learn what was happening experimentally. And um, I, I find that very satisfying. So I like to I've always in my career liked to be in touch with what's happening experimentally or even develop new experimental techniques. Even though I'm not an experimentalist, I've been involved many times in proposing new ways to detect things. We proposed new ways to detect dark matter 40 years ago, and I thought in four or five years the experimentalists would have done it. It, hap it takes them a lot longer, which is maybe one reason I'm happy to be a theorist, because then I can move on to other things. But anyway, so I think, I think um, there's no doubt particle physics has been in a difficult situation. There hasn't been a new discovery that, that surprised us, perhaps, except for neutrino masses, and, and even those were kind of expected in some ways. Uh, but something that led us in a new direction in, in 40 years, and that's very difficult. And um, and that means that that, that sort of fundamental theory in, in particle physics is is problematic right now. But, you know, you never know when the next good idea is going to come along. And, and that's why I turn to sometimes the universe, because the universe can reveal fascinating things. The universe, after all, is a particle physics experiment <laughs> done at least once. It was done once at the Big Bang, and now it's data analysis.